Hey fish and freaks, welcome to today's video and it's going to be a little bit different today. I'm going to kind of tell a little bit of a story from over the weekend fishing with my father, getting to spend some time with the family. Uh, it was much needed and I wanted to share a few clips with you. Uh, you probably saw the thumbnail and saw a really fat bass so I wanted to get in to that and also uh, the reason why bass get so fat this time of year. So I really don't get to spend that much time fishing with my dad anymore. We live in different cities. It's not too far apart, but it's just far enough apart where we don't get to connect and go fishing like we did when I was a kid. I had this telescopic cane pole uh, that I would put little grubs on. He'd buy me a little deal of, of grubs, grub worms. I would just sit back there with those grubs and I would be slamming bluegill and little bass while he was bass fishing out of the front of his uh, brown Terry bass boat. I remember that. Those memories are ingrained in my head. My dad taking me when I was, you know, three, four, five on up. We're both obsessed with fishing. So it's, it's awesome to, to go with my dad now and for me to be the one on the trolling motor and showing him things and showing him how to fish and telling him where to cast. And there's just something really neat about that. So God bless all the dads out there. Thank you for taking your sons and daughters fishing. I think it's awesome. Got to spend time with my dad and we caught we caught some toads. Here's a fish right here that came off a crankbait. This is when my dad got, uh, it's about a four pounder on crankbait. Hanging out with dad, just doing a little fishing. He's got a good one on right now on a crankbait. You gonna get him in? Yep. That's a fat fish, don't lose him. Don't wanna put the pressure on you. <laughs> Come on, big boy. Let's rod out of your way. Almost, almost, almost. There you go. <sighs> Barely got it. Nice one. Nicely done. He was right on the shoreline. Yeah. <sighs> That's a good picture fish, Dad. We'll get you a so. picture with him. I think so. Huh? There you go. Yeah, stick him in, stick him in the whale. Yeah. So my dad caught that crankbait fish and he was pumped. That's the biggest fish he'd caught in a little while. The way my dad loves to catch fish, and I can't blame him, is just fishing a worm. That is his favorite thing, just fishing a worm slow on the bottom. I remember him just having like bags of culprit curl tail worms when I was a kid, and he would always fish those. He didn't have a worm rod with him, and I had one with me, and, and he said, hey, do you, do you have any worms? Like, of course I do, Dad. I, of course I got worms. So I handed him my nicest worm rod that I had. I had braided line on there, with the fluorocarbon leader, which also makes it even more sensitive. And he had never fished that caliber of rod. And then he'd never fished braid with a fluorocarbon leader either. So just that combination can kind of be shocking when you first fish with it. So it was really funny. I handed him the rod and I said, dad, why don't you throw over there, right on that little point right there. It's probably going to be a fish. And sure enough, first cast, he throws over there, he starts working in the rocks and he's like, Dang, son, I can really feel all the rocks down there. And then, thump, he set the hook. And just when he looked over at me and he just smiled, like, that felt awesome. That, that was just, it was really cool. So I really went out there to just put my dad on some fish and have some fun. Really wasn't planning on uh, filming. But I did have the, the GoPro out just because I was, you know, I got enjoyment out of filming my dad. There was, uh, like, some wind and some kind of rainy like a drizzle that started to come in and I was like this is ultimate spinnerbait conditions right here I picked one up and I started flinging it around and I, I lost like a five pounder I was like man that's a, that the biggest bite we've had all day so I kept throwing it a few more casts it was like a little lay down or a bar or I don't I don't even know what it was, it was just something sticking out of the water and I got over the top of it and the spinnerbait literally was about to come out of the water and then wham, this big bass just grabbed it right at the surface, almost like a top water bite. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> That's a toad, baby. That's a toad. Love it. He hammered it. Oh my gosh. Choked it. Hit it so hard. That's a nice fish. So the next clip, I was throwing that same spinner bait and I, I had a trailer hook on that spinner bait, which I normally don't throw. I don't like throwing trailer hooks because I usually fish spinner baits with really heavy cover and they usually cause me more problems than good. But this particular time, I got another bump, got the fish in, slung it in. It's like another four and a half, five pounder and it's just got the trailer hook. So that was, um, I was like, man, I'm glad I put that trailer hook on last time I went out. I never would have caught that fish. Uh, and then shortly after that, it started raining. We had to go in um, and we got some good pictures together. It was just like, it was just a great day on the water. Thanksgiving, you know, weekend with family, then being able to go take my dad out. And he was, and he normally never really asked me to, to go, but this time he was like, so and I just I really want to go and I was like you know what I want to take you dad and we had the time and it just it was an awesome day so I hope you guys get to spend some time with uh, with your friends and family taking them fishing or going um, over the holidays or hunting just spending time in the outdoors with your family it's some of the best memories you'll ever have if you're a woodsman or an outdoorsman like me so that brings me to the next thing that I wanted to talk about and that is why bass are so fat right now. In the south starting in October going through about January that's when fish are really building up their eggs, the females anyway. The fish feed heavily in the fall all male and female but the females especially instinctually they know to feed up and start producing those eggs. And when the fish is, is really fat, when those females really start to get yoked up, they can be 20% more of their actual body weight. So add another 20% on to what the regular weight is of a bass late spring, summer versus this time of year when they're full of those eggs. That's when you start seeing those giant bass coming in. Fish will grow to a certain length and then they kind of stop growing lengthwise and then they just grow girthwise and then you add an extra 10 20 maybe even 30 percent body weight this time of year that's when you can really catch a giant that fish i caught about seven pounds you know it was probably about a a six pounder normally like you know when it doesn't have eggs going on that's why bass get so fat and they can actually spawn in the fall as well if the conditions are right if they have a early spawn in the spring and then the lake is very fertile they build eggs back up early in the fall and then when the water temps get back down in the low 60s um, it's it's like a, a false spring you know water temps are in the low 60s things are kind of right and some fish even spawn in the fall I've seen it I've seen it myself uh, it's rare to see, but it does happen. Most of the bass just fill up all fall and winter and then prepare to lay their eggs in the spring. If you're in the north, uh, of course the spawn is going to be a little later. Your, your fish are uh, you're slow, you're slowing down. But in the south, our spawn is going to be coming up before you even know it. You know, big, big bass are going to be laying their eggs late February. In, in places like Texas, Alabama, Florida, you're looking at even the end of this uh, at December or January when the spawn happens. So this is when fish are at their fattest. And a lot of people choose not to fish this time of year, which I can't blame you. There's a lot of other great outdoor activities going on, um, tons of hunting opportunities. But if you want to catch a giant, a mega fatty, this is the time of year to do it or you actually you got a few months ahead of you to try to go get that done but whatever you're doing if you're in a deer blind or in the in the duck blind just have fun with your friends and family and be safe out there and just have fun in the outdoors you know it's it's something about this time of year it's like harvest time 
friends and family. It's a good time of year to be an outdoorsman or a woodsman, whatever you are. So get out there and enjoy it. Got more action coming up for you guys, and I'm actually going to be doing a hunt coming up very soon with our favorite redneck, Mr. Outlaw. So that's going to be very interesting. And of course, I'll keep the fishing videos coming. And if you want to see more, you can click on the annotation links here at the end screen. You know where to do it. And hey guys, make sure you subscribe, hit the like button, share these videos if you're feeling it. And I hope you guys learned something today, and I'll catch y'all later. Just a good old day out here fishing with my pops. And uh, can't beat it, man. Post Thanksgiving, just a little family time out here on the lake. It's all good. I hope you guys are getting some, some action in, fishing with your fellow friends, your loved ones, while we're out here in the, in the holiday season. Go out and fish with people you love. It makes life better. Catch y'all later.